Debt consolidation loans and debt settlement are often very confusing topics, mostly because they're both form of debt consolidation. Now, the problem is if you actually choose the wrong option though. So one option is often used for those who have difficulty paying their bills, while the other option tends to be ones who just want access to cheaper credit. So we will cover both options in detail. So let's get right into it. Welcome to the Send Finance YouTube channel where we're covering the pros and cons of both options. But if you'd like to check your rate for a free from a reputable company in both debt consolidation and debt settlement, not affecting your credit score, we added links to three debt consolidation loan companies that we like, as well as two debt settlement companies that we like in the description below. So you can check those out. You can compare the options and see if there's one that makes the most sense for you. So here's what we're going to cover in today's video. First thing is going to go through debt consolidation loans, pros and cons, and kind of what that looks like. And the second thing we're going to go through is the debt settlement pros and cons. And then finally, which one should you do? What's best for you? As often it's quite confusing in trying to figure out which is actually the best route. So let's get started. So as I noted, I want to touch on the pros and cons first, especially starting with the pros of debt consolidation loans. So you can often receive a lower rate and save money. You will have one payment instead of having multiple payments. You can get out of debt faster than potentially just continuing to make your minimum payments. You actually may see your credit score improve from using a consolidation loan. And one thing's nice is you'll you'll be able to have a fixed interest rate instead of a variable interest rate, right? It's not gonna go up, it should be fixed from the start. Now, with that said though, oftentimes there are cons to everything. So the cons of consolidation loans would look like that you may actually have an origination fee to pay. Your monthly payment may be higher or it may be high just in general. You may not save money on all the debt you're consolidating. You may have not actually addressed the root cause of the debt by taking out a loan. You may face lower payment flexibility if you face a financial hardship. So if you have a higher payment now from the loan, you may be have less wiggle room if you will. Also, your credit report will have to have a new hard credit pull. So it should be soft to check the rate, but once they actually give you the loan and once you accept it, it I believe it's a hard credit pull. Now, with that said about loans, I wanna to touch on debt settlement now and what the pros and cons will look like for that. And so first thing, you know, I wanna to touch on how much you pay each month to the debt goes way down. So you're gonna see significant savings. Now with debt settlement, you can pay less than what's owed. Now the savings generally vary depending on the creditor, but generally it's about 50% or higher in terms of savings. Now, if you have a $50,000 balance of unsecured debt and the company is able to get it down by half, then you can save quite a bit of money because you're taking it from 50K to 25,000. Another pro here would be payment flexibility. So unlike a loan or a credit card or a chapter 13 plan, you have more flexibility each month to set how much your monthly draft is that's sent to the escrow account you're funding. You can have this flexibility even if you're not currently in a settlement, which is quite nice. So let's say, you know, it's Christmas time and it's the holidays and you want to buy presents for your kiddos or you want to buy gifts. Some individual may be able to actually pause a payment for a month to be able to afford those presents and then continue on after the holidays. Another pro would be time. So if you pay your credit card minimums, it could take several years to pay off the balances, especially if the interest rate's exorbitant. Now with debt settlement, once the accounts are actually settled and resolved, you are usually on a fixed payment plan for 12 to 24 months to 100% resolve credit. Another pro would be that you get to avoid bankruptcy altogether. So while sometimes bankruptcy can actually be a great option, folks that either want to steer clear of it, or if it doesn't make sense for them, debt settlement can allow you to avoid bankruptcy, but still get some sort of debt relief. So let's say, for example, you file for a chapter seven and your public record will have that on 10 years and then seven years for a chapter 13 bankruptcy. That said, you may be able to actually rebuild your credit after filing a bankruptcy quicker than debt settlement, but that's a story for another day. We have videos that go through kind of the credit score implications and all of that. Now, another pro would be the financial flexibility. So sometimes it can take four years to get a conventional loan after bankruptcy. You don't have those necessarily restrictions with debt settlement. That said though, you would still need to rebuild your credit after debt settlement, which we'll talk about more in the actual cons portion of the video. So another pro here is the accountability. So most individuals cancel credit card accounts 
when they enter a debt relief program. This provides some sort of accountability not to incur any new additional debt and actually just get on a monthly budget. Because when you are able to say, okay, I'm paying $450 a month to my debt settlement program, I'm paying this towards groceries, I'm paying this towards rent or mortgage, whatever it is, you can really structure your budget a little bit easier. Now, a lot of great things, but there are also cons. And so that's what I want to touch on now. The first being something very important is the fact that you have potential risk of lawsuits. So some creditors may attempt to sue for the unpaid debt in a debt collection lawsuit. Now each creditor is different though, and that's why it's important to understand who may sue, who may not sue before entering a debt settlement program, or actually to speak with a company about the lawsuit likelihood. So when we were a debt settlement company and we had the programs, we ran an analysis to help the individuals know the lawsuit likelihood by each creditor. And with that said, we decided to build a free lawsuit likelihood calculator to help you estimate the risk of you being sued. And I and will put a link in the description for that. Second, so the credit score and the credit report impact. So as I was touching on earlier, there are credit score implications. Your credit score may be negatively impacted if you enroll into a debt settlement program. The reason being is for the most part, you know, if you're not behind on these accounts, you'll have to stop paying. And so how much your credit score will actually go down is relative. And so we did some sort of analysis here that you can actually view and understand how the credit score implication works. So in short, if you're behind on your debt and your credit score has already gone down, you may see a lesser drop than if all of your accounts are current. If your accounts are all current, you may want to actually compare debt management to debt settlement. At that point, it would come down to affordability, the type of debt you owe on, and a few other things. But nevertheless, the third con here is the potential taxes on forgiven debt. If you are tax solvent, you may owe taxes on the forgiven debt. If, on the other hand, you're tax insolvent, you may not. This is just an estimate, so please speak with a tax advisor, but that may be the case. And so if you're asking yourself, well, what is tax solvency? Well, you can and actually check out our taxes and debt settlement article covering just how that works so that you can understand if you're tax solvent for your situation. Now, moving forward, the fourth con, there may be late fees and interest. So the debt settlement company often settles the different accounts when they have funds in the escrow account. As such though, the actual debt at the time of when they're negotiating is higher than what it was when you enrolled. This increase may be insignificant, but it's important that you're aware. Fifth, that debt settlement may be actually more expensive than doing a chapter seven bankruptcy. So when you look at the cost of filing a chapter seven, you may actually see that chapter seven is both faster and cheaper than debt settlement. While this may not be the case with a chapter 13, chapter seven is often the least expensive debt relief option. Okay, so six, creditors don't always necessarily settle. So you do have the risk that a creditor may not settle an account. While many creditors settle the debt for less than owed, there are there may be a creditor that will not settle the debt for less than owed. The debt settlement you company you work with should understand who settles and who doesn't settle before you enroll. So it's a good question to ask and make sure they're setting you up for success. Like for example, let's say, you know, there's some credit unions or federal credit unions that won't settle debt. So now that we kind of covered the pros and cons, the big question here is which should you do? Should you take out a loan? Should you apply for a loan? Or should you do debt settlement? Ultimately, it's your decision. But if you have visited our debt consolidation loan options page and you haven't qualified, you may be interested to take our actually debt free or our free debt settlement versus debt management calculator that I actually put a link in the description below. Debt management can be helpful. It's also known as credit counseling. This should ideally have a less severe cons to debt settlement. And so we built this free resource to help you make the most informed decision. Now with that all said, it's often complex to understand and compare your options. And so if you do have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can call us at 833-272-3631. You can leave a comment down below. Thanks again so much for watching. I'm always here if you have questions.